Hello everyone, my name is Prab Nair and I'm working as a Chief Instructor at InfoSec Training. Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about open source intelligence. This is the very common trend which is seen in last one year, two years. So I thought I will make a video on that, which give you a kind of idea about what is OSINT. This video not only useful for your exam prep for IC square, ISACA or any other, but also very useful for your interview prep. This video I'm going to cover from very basics. So it give you a brief understanding about the OSINT. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so before going to start the OSINT in detail, let me first understand the basics and what is OSINT. OSINT, if you can see that they have clearly mentioned open source intelligence. It is a methodology, a process by which we collect the data uh, which is openly available in the market. Example, here the technology market is Google. So whatever you search in a Google from there, you get the reference and you use that information for your purpose. So normally what happen, uh, there is a user, example like uh, the username is one, A. This user basically what he did, he upload one picture on Facebook and there is a, another user, okay, is also on a Facebook and he is basically hunting for the user A information and one day what happened, he upload the picture, it was amazing feeling uh, and he clicked the picture of the house and in that house, there was a, in that picture, we can see the house address and we can also see the uh, car number both information was there in that picture so what this user did this user basically checked that information he also checked the car information and he opened the state transport app and in that he entered the car number where from here he got the information about the user a and from the address he can able to trace his location so a picture was uploaded on the social media and another user which is a hacker or anyone a researcher or government agencies <laughs> they basically checked that image and in the email they found some sensitive information from there they got the visibility about this person is belong to this country and this car belong to him and this is the house address so for this it is easy for them to trace so that is what is called as OSINT a process of collecting analyzing of a data which is gathered from the open source which is a publicly available market and with the help of that information apply the intelligence so before going to do that let me discuss the three important term data information and intelligence data information and the third word is called as a intelligence example like one of the user basically upload the picture now in that picture, he finds some series of information like address, car name, and then on that, he basically apply the intelligence. Okay, so this person is stay in that location. So intelligence is something you apply, your mind. But for that, you need two information, data and information. So that is what is called as a OSINT. So it is mostly employed in the national security law enforcement and business intelligence tasks which is useful to analysts who use non-sensitive information to respond to the classified unclassified or appropriate intelligence need across the prior intelligence discipline sometimes what happens there is a government order to track this guy sometimes there is a national security threat to track that guy so they basically use this public information on based on the request and try to collect and apply the intelligence okay this guy from last three days going to this location so this is the pattern we have identified and then we apply intelligence i'm sure tomorrow also on next same time he will be there in that particular location so this is how the open source information has been used for this purpose initially this osint term was introduced in the united states 
ओके सो यू एस यूनाइटेड स्टेट ऑफ अमेरिका दे हैव एमेंड दिस एज अ पब्लिक लॉ विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ वन जीरो नाइन वन सिक्स थ्री विच इज सेटेड बाय द बोथ द यू एस सो ऑरिजिन इज बेसिकली फ्रॉम देयर बट द क्वेश्चन इज नाउ वॉट आर द सोर्सेज फ्रॉम विच वी कैन कलेक्ट द इन्फॉर्मेशन द फर्स्ट सोर्स इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज अ मीडिया ना मैंने से मीडिया मीडिया कैन बी माई प्रिंट्स न्यूज़ पेपर मैगजीन रेडियो एंड टेलीविजन फ्रॉम अक्रॉस एंड बिटवीन द कंट्रीज सो लॉट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन पब्लिश इन मीडिया एंड फ्रॉम देयर वी ट्राई टू एक्सट्रैक्ट द इन्फॉर्मेशन सेकेंड वी यूज इंटरनेट लाइक ऑनलाइन पब्लिकेशन ब्लॉग्स डिस्कशन ग्रुप्स सेल फोन वीडियोज यूजर क्रिएटेड कॉन्टेंट यूट्यूब कॉन्टेंट सोशल मीडिया वेबसाइट वी लॉग्स सो दिस सोर्स ऑल्सो आउट स्पेस अ वेराइटी ऑफ अदर सोर्स ड्यू टू द टाइम लाइननेस एंड ईज ऑफ एक्सेस द थर्ड इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज अ पब्लिक गवर्नमेंट डेटा सो पब्लिक गवर्नमेंट डेटा लाइक रिपोर्ट्स बजट बिकॉज ओ एस आई एन टी ऑल्सो डन बाई वन कंट्री ऑन अदर कंट्री सो दे चेक देर रिपोर्ट्स दे चेक देर बजट्स दे चेक द हेयरिंग्स दे चेक द टेलीफोन डायरेक्टरीज प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंसिस वेबसाइट स्पीचेज ऑल दो दिस सोर्स कम फ्रॉम ऑफिशियल सोर्स दे आर पब्लिकली एक्सेबल बट मे बी यूज ओपनली एंड फ्रीली देन वी हैव अ प्रोफेशनल एंड अकेडमिक पब्लिकेशन प्रोफेशनल एंड अकेडमिक पब्लिकेशन लाइक इन्फॉर्मेशन वी हैव एक्वायर फ्रॉम अ जर्नल कॉन्फ्रेंसिस अकेडमिया पेपर डिसशन एंड थीसिस एंड देन लास्ट वी हैव अ कमर्शियल डेटा दे इज अ लॉट ऑफ प्राइवेट कंपनीज ऑल्सो विच प्रोवाइडिंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन ओके लाइक कमर्शियल इमेजनरी फाइनेंशियल ब्रांड इंडोसमेंट टीम डेटा बेस इज जूम दिस कैंड ऑफ अ कंपनीज ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड द इन्फॉर्मेशन सो दिस इज द सोर्स फ्रॉम विच वी कलेक्ट द इन्फॉर्मेशन सी कलेक्टिंग इज नॉट अ चैलेंज the challenge basically is sorting and analyzing so we basically follow the process by which we use this information and that is called as a osint life cycle because collecting only the information will not provide the relevancy it is very important to sorting and analyzing the information make sure the information that we collected is meaningful so there is a life cycle we follow in that life cycle the first step is called as a identify the potential source example we obtaining a data from facebook we obtaining a data from google so that is basically called as a source information we have so initial phase where the individual identify potential source from which information may be gathered from so sources are documented and detailed notes are basically write down for the later use okay this image i have obtained from facebook so this is how i written the notes so later on when i'm doing an analysis i know from which source i got this information so i will identify the source from which i need to collect the data and i need to also justify why i'm collecting a data and what is the timeline the once you basically collect you will harvest the data so information is collected and harvested from a selected source and other sources that are discovered throughout this phase then whatever the data we have collected on that i'm going to do processing example like i have collected the image of ramesh but along with that i got the information about the family so i don't want a information about his rest of the family so i will analyze and i will see what is the information in that group of image related to the ramesh one more example is 1.1.1. ip is basically targeted my network but i got the information about the logs of 10 ips so collection of the 10 ips was part of a data harvesting collected from the firewall was a potential source but now i am processing and seeing what is relevant to the 1.1.1 so from the traffic of 10 ips i am going to shortlist the 1.1.1 because that is something i need to analyze so detail next we have a analysis step where i am going to check for the relevancy which is required as per the business function and then finally i will prepare the results so in the final stage in which analyst or os osint analyst analysis is completed and findings are presented and reported to the other member of the team so summary is that first we identify the source from which we collect the data second is we start collecting then we basically processing which is relevant and the relevant data will do the analysis and finally we basically prepare the report the person who does this this is called as a o o s i n t analyst the way we have a security analyst same like we have a o s i n t analyst so when we talking about o s i n t it is basically done by two way as the name suggested we have a two type of o s i n t one is basically called as a active o s i n t active osint is basically active in nature it means we have a direct contact with the target which lead to be more reliable result example i visited one website i called the customer care and from where i got the direct information like i log in into the target accounts i contacted the targets i contacted the friends i contact the family example like i called ramesh hey sir this is basically uh, i use my false name like hey sir this is ramesh Rajesh, uh, sorry rajesh and i'm calling from the bank and we have a great offer for you just to confirm your house address so we can send you this card 
So I know this guy has an account in the city and I call on behalf of city. So this is how I directly interacted and collect the information. But, but, but there is a higher risk of being detected by the target. So one of the best advantage of activists directly interact with the target and we get a reliable result. Okay, it's more like a real time result because you're contacting directly. But we also have a other technique which is called as a passive technique. Normally what happens when we do go for the information gathering, which is part of the OSINT analyst, first we do the active only. Okay, whatever the maximum information we can gather, or sorry, first we do passive only. Whatever the passive information we gather, we get the, some ID and then based on that to verify validate, we do the active. So passive is basically by the third party. So instead of directly going to the website called IBM.com, I will go to Google and collect the information about IBM.com. Whatever the third party website maintain the information, like there is a website called whois.sc. Okay, suppose we have a website called whois.sc. Now I will enter the URL of the website in the whois.sc and it basically provide me the complete information about the website. Like what is the domain, what is the IP, what are the operating system running on the website. So I will get a complete history about the website. Why? Because that whois.sc has stored the information about the website. So I'm not interacting. My IP is not logged on the destination web server. My IP will be logged on the whois.sc. So that is basically called as a passive OSINT technique. So I'm using a third party services, third party website from there I'm collecting the information. So no interaction with the target, no illegal hacking, third party records I'm going to access. And in this case, we have a low risk of being detected. See, there is a myth people has OSINT only from information gathering, which is wrong. From a security perspective, we can separate OSINT into two categories. One is basically called as an offensive and one is basically called as a defensive. When we're talking about offensive, we basically gather information before an attack. Example, we have a security team. Okay, we have a security defenders and all that. We have a firewall experts. So they basically collecting the information about the threats from the multiple party websites so that they can able to predict the pattern, threats and everything. So here the OSINT use from the, uh, you can say defensive point of view. Okay, offensive point of view is basically mean I am the hacker, I want to hack. Okay, I am a hacker, I want to hack. So I want to collect the information that is called as offensive. So OSINT is basically used from the multiple source and it is used for the multiple techniques. Okay. And within the OSINT, with the, within the cybersecurity, okay, we can also use to measure the risk to your organization. And also we can understand the attackers, actors, attacker techniques, tactics and target. Okay. So next is basically called as a tools. So we have a different type of tools that you can use for the OSINT. One of the popular tool which I use is called as a Multigo. So Multigo is a specialized in uncovering the relationship among the people, companies, domains, and publicly accessible information. What I have experienced with Multigo in the Kali Linux, you just enter the IP, you enter the domain name, and it gives you the complete root directory information about the company. So that is my first recommendation to be used. Second is basically called as a Mitaka. Mitaka is basically available as a Chrome extension and also Firefox add-on plugin. It let you search over the six design search engine for the IP address, domain, URL, Bitcoin wallet address, and various indicator of compromise from your web server. The third one, which is basically called as a cyber spider foot. When we're talking about the spider foot, it is a free OSINT reconnaissance tool that integrate with a multiple data source to gather, analyze the IP address. The best thing about spider foot, it gather the CIDR range, domain, subdomains, email address, and everything. Next is basically called as a Google. As you know, Google is a common. Then we have a built with. Built with let you find the popular website that are built with the different technologies. It gives you the visibility about the different tech stacks that are used by the, uh, this called tech stacks used by the web browser or platform. Then we have a Intelligence X. Intelligent X is the first kind of website which is an archival service and search engine that preserve not only the historic version of the website but also entire leaked data sets that are otherwise removed from the web due to the objectionable nature of the content or legal reason. So backdated data you will get from Intelligence X or Arca.org. So these are the tools which I refer when I do my OSINT. So OSINT is a framework which can be used to establish the digital footprints of a known threats. Example, I'm running a company. I want to know what are the possible threats I have. 
So I will use the OSNT from the point of view of the defensive, where I will see what are the techniques, attack patterns used by the attacker to attack my systems. It gather all availability intelligence about the adversary activities, interest technique, motivation, habit. How? See, if I'm thinking like a hacker, I host one website. I think like a hacker and see what are the information is available about my website on the portal. What is the information is available about my website on the global network? So I discover some website which told information about my configurations and everything. So here I use the OSINT technique and I discover some of the website which basically stored my company website data and everything. So I request the administrator to take down the information. So this is how the OSINT I'm using from the defensive point of view. The OSNT framework has also used to categorize the data by source, tool, methods or goal. And with the help of OSINT, I can able to improve my security postures and the system recommendations. So this is how the OSINT is basically used for the purpose. But there are so many advantage we have, but it also come with a lot of issues. The biggest issue is basically legal. See publicly available information is perfect legal to access even you analyze and distribute. Just to remember that it can be used by attacker to support or advance the illegal activity by seeding or misleading malicious data into certain communities. So hacktivists especially are known to distribute data public to influence the public opinion. So that is the one thing we have. The best example is Cambridge Analytica, where they have basically got the, this kind of issue about that. Okay, they have influenced the elections and everything. Second is basically ethical. While great deal of information is available online, the people and companies must use such information ethically. So when using a OSINT, the practitioner must ensure they are doing so for legitimate purpose and the information is not used to exploit. And third, we should collect the information in such a manner that it should not breach someone's privacy. But sometimes what happened too much information from multiple source can breach the privacy. So these are the three major issues we have when you're dealing with the OSINT. So this is all from my side. Do let me know how do you find this video and do let me know shall I make more videos on the offensive security and you let me know your five tools that you recommend for the OSI NT. This is all from my side team. If you're still not subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. Good day. Bye.